Here are five advanced building strats to help you dominate in 1v1s. Presented by Fortnite Master. It's been a while since our last building guide, but we're back with some more advanced building strats for you guys. Now, many of the building tricks that we haven't covered already are insanely advanced. Don't get us wrong, they work well, but they are often so difficult and situational that you'd be lucky to pull one off in a real game. If you can master these tricks, however, you'll be able to retake height in unconventional ways, build up faster than anyone else, and confuse your opponents with some tricky maneuvers. Without wasting any more time, let's get started. The first trick we're going to cover is the one jump double 90s. This is not two standard 90s in a row, in which you jump once for each 90. This trick is two complete 90s and a single jump, in which you might guess is faster than doing two standard 90s. We want to start by saying that there is a way to do two 90s in one jump with just speed, position, and low ping. They are, however, extremely difficult, involve some pretty heavy phasing into the ramp of your second 90, and most importantly, are only possible with extremely low ping. Since doing it this way wouldn't be possible for many of our viewers, we found a more manageable approach that we're going to share. Credit to CNNR for this one. You can check out his YouTube channel in the description below. On to the trick, this first step is what makes these double 90s easier. When ramping up, edit your ramp and cut it in half. This part takes some finesse, because as you can see, it looks like we're editing the ramp backwards, but we're really editing it forwards. When you're far enough away from the ramp and edit like this, you're actually cutting from underneath, meaning you're clicking on the closest square first and pulling your cursor towards you, which actually makes your cursor go forward. Getting this edit down smoothly is the first step, and it may take some practice in itself. Our first piece of advice is to make sure you're editing the ramp from as far away as possible. If you're getting too close, you won't be able to get the right angle. The second is to wait to confirm the edit until you're jumping onto where the railing would be. If you confirm midair, then just land on the railing, it makes the movement much smoother. Once you have the edit down, it's time for the double 90s. Stand near the top of the railing, but not all the way at the edge. Then, you need to jump and do two 90s as quick as possible. Make sure you have your muscle memory for regular 90s practiced, because you basically need to do that motion twice as fast. This next trick is a variation of the traditional 180 that gives you more options, protection, and control. We don't know who the first person to come up with this was, but feel free to comment down below if you know the correct credit. The core concept is pretty simple. When you turn to do a 180, place a third wall on top of the two you would normally place. Note that you need to be looking almost straight up to get this placement. The third wall is the key to this trick. First off, if your opponent is holding high ground by ramp, floor, walling, there's a good chance they'll think that that wall is theirs. Something that players with high ground have begun to do is ramp floor walling over an enemy, then editing through their ramp and wall to catch the opponent off guard. This trick protects you from that edit because you own the wall. That also means that you can edit through to surprise your opponents from an unexpected angle, all because of that third wall you place when you 180'd. And as always, there is a more advanced version of this trick that is essentially a tricky high ground retake. After you 180 with three walls, jump up and place one ramp below you, another ramp above, and a cone on top of that. Then turn around again, flip the ramp above you, edit your cone, and continue with building for height with 90s or whatever suits you. Here is it in slow-mo, so you can understand step by step. This trick is something we've started to see most mechanically skilled players use. The core of this trick is easy to execute, and there are a couple of different plays you can do afterwards, making it a practical and versatile tool for any player. The next trick is a reliable way to retake the high ground safely. You can use this pretty much any time you're ramping towards an opponent on high ground who is presumably trying to block or shoot you on the way up. Credit to Zoo Key Ni FN on Reddit for bringing this to our attention. So let's say you're ramping towards somebody that has height. Most players will protect themselves with a pyramid or a floor, then do one of a few things. Edit through, side jump, or turn and double ramp in another direction. The problem is that these plays have become predictable and many players have learned how to easily counter them. The protected sidestep retake is simple yet effective. 
When ramping up, place two cones, one above you and another on one side. Next, you want to place three walls, connecting the cones as you're turning to the side. Then building a ramp, edit through your cone and proceed to 90 up. The first part of the trick that can be difficult is the wall placement. You want to make sure you're looking up slightly and dragging your cursor straight left. A few minutes of practice should be enough to get this down. After that, the trick is easy. Just place a ramp, edit through your pyramid, and 90 up. We love this trick because it's easy to execute and undeniably effective. It takes you in a direction that many players wouldn't expect and is a great way to stay unpredictable and build battles. The fourth trick has been dubbed Crazy Asian Greg Protected Side Jumps, named after its creator, Asian Greg. You can check out his channel in the description below. This trick is an interesting variation on a high ground retake. As far as we can tell, it's basically a way to brute force your way up a couple of levels with full protection if you need to. The trick itself is straightforward. You do a side jump and then cover all your angles. There are a couple of small things you might have trouble with though. First is you need to land pretty far back so you can catch yourself with the floor and a ramp. Making this version of the side jump is a little more precise, so practice this first step if you're having trouble. The next step is building to cover your angles as fast as possible. And that's all there really is to it. It may take some practice to get this down at full speed, but once you do, it's a pretty snazzy trick to have in your back pocket. If you're worried about those split seconds of vulnerability before build protection, you can use a slightly more difficult version of this trick. When you make the jump, build your two walls before catching yourself. This offers immediate protection, although it is more difficult as you need to build two things before catching yourself from the precise side jump. The final building strat in this video is the three foe cone, but it's not just the standard version which we covered in our last advanced building tricks video. If you want an explanation of why it's useful and tips on how to master the standard three foe cone, go check out that first video. In this one, we're gonna cover a couple of variations of the three foe cone, including the three foe god cone. The simplest variations are the left and right versions of the three foe cone. These variations are actually easier than the normal 3 foe cone, but give a different kind of protection. These offer no protection from behind, so they're not a great choice if somebody is following you. They do, however, offer full protection on whichever side you choose. The next two variations, protected left and right, are a combination of the traditional 3 foe cone and the left and right variations. You need to build a wall behind and another to your left or right before placing the cone. These variations offer full benefits of the traditional 3 foe cone along with full protection from the side. The last variation, dubbed the god cone, is a little trickier. It starts out like the original 3 foe cone, but after you place the cone, you edit it and place another cone on top of that. The God Cone essentially blocks enemies one level higher than the normal 3 foe Cone. This last variation is extremely situational, but you still want it in your back pocket for those one or two instances where it could come in handy. Thank you guys for watching this video. For those who are new to the channel, if you've enjoyed this video, check out some of the others on the right side of the screen. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell to get notifications for whenever a new guide shows up. We have grown tremendously in the last few months and couldn't have done it without all of our supporters. Thank you again so much and doubly so if you shared it with anyone else like your friends, family, or your pets. You guys are great and we hope to keep making videos that you all like. From over here at Fortnite Master, my name is The Saved One and we're out. Peace.